This video contains personal and or confidential information. Any disclosure, copying, storage, or distribution of these materials is strictly prohibited by the Municipal Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act, Policy P094, Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy, and Operational Procedure PR676, Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy. We acknowledge we are hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. Hello, and welcome to Social Communication at Home, Strategies for Parents and Caregivers. This short presentation will explain the term social communication, and it will provide strategy and activity ideas that can be used at home to support a child in developing social communication skills. Good verbal communicators share messages using words, phrases, and sentences. But good communication goes beyond simply speaking words. Kids who are good communicators also need strong social communication skills. We can think of social communication as the why, the how, and the who of communication. Social communication refers to someone's ability to communicate in many different ways while using what we call the unspoken rules of communication and while changing how they communicate depending on their audience. Let's talk specifically about the why of communication. We communicate for many different reasons. Initially, children tend to communicate to make requests. I want the train, for instance, to protest, no, and to greet using words like hi and bye. However, it is very important that children expand their reasons why they communicate to include words and sentences that make requests, ask questions, give information, negotiate, etc. They also have to learn to understand these different types of messages. How to communicate a message is also very important to learn. A good communicator understands the unspoken rules of communication. These are typically conversational rules that often have to be inferred and are not directly taught. For example, the unspoken rules of conversation include turn-taking. A conversation must have at least two alternative voices. Eye contact. We look at our communication partners in the eye most of the time. Personal space, we must stand close enough to be heard, but not so close as to make the other person feel uncomfortable. As well, we use facial expressions and gestures. We use many nonverbal ways to help us communicate our messages more clearly to our listeners. We use things like eye rolling, grimacing, raised eyebrows, raised shoulders, head nods, and shakes. Successful communication adapts. Communication must adapt to consider the needs of the listener or situation, the who of the conversation. We must understand the difference between talking to a baby and a grandparent. We talk louder when there is lots of noise. We must be aware of our listener's pre-knowledge of a subject giving more or less information as required. And we must understand formal versus informal communication styles that can be used based on familiarity with an audience. Why are social communication skills so important? Social communication skills are important as they help children build and maintain relationships by engaging appropriately with others during interactions. 
without strong social communication skills, a child's ability to develop strong friendships may suffer. Children with weaker social communication skills may struggle to understand their peers' unspoken messages, tone of voice, facial expressions, and body language. It is also quite typical that children with social communication difficulties have a hard time knowing how to communicate successfully with the people in their lives because they have limited types of messages to share with others or have difficulty understanding another person's point of view. Academic success may also be affected for children with social communication difficulties because school typically involves much group work and cooperative play is expected. Also, there are many nonverbal ways in which adults give children feedback about their progress in behavior using tone of voice, facial expressions, and body language. These may be difficult to interpret. Now that we all understand what the term social communication means and why the skill is important for children to develop, let's look at some strategies that you can use at home to help your child's social communication skills to expand. The first strategy that we're going to look at is modeling. Modeling is an extremely important strategy that we can be used at home to help encourage social communication skills to develop. Modeling means to show your child what to say in different situations by saying it yourself. Let's look at some examples. While completing daily routines like setting the table or cooking, you can show your child how to say many different types of messages by speaking aloud while completing your tasks. On this slide, you can see different types of messages that can be modeled. Plus, these familiar activities allow for lots of practice. For instance, you can model the message, I want more juice. This is a request. You can model a greeting, such as, good morning, everyone. You could also model asking for permission. For instance, using the question, can I leave the table? The second strategy is role-playing. Role-playing is another fun and effective way to help your child to expand their social communication skills. Role-playing is simply practicing what to say in different situations. For children, role-playing is great within pretend play. While playing, use whatever you have in the way of dolls, action figures or puppets, and pretend to have conversations about familiar events or situations, like making breakfast, going to a movie or Tim Hortons, or saying sorry to a friend. Don't be afraid to act out the same scenario over and over again, because the repetition will help your child remember what to say. These are some examples of role-playing that can be done at home. For instance, while playing with action figures or puppets, pretend to have a conversation with a grandparent. Pretend to ask for help at a grocery store. Or you could pretend to say no thank you to an invitation to play. If your child's social communication skills are somewhat stronger, you can also use role-playing to practice using language to negotiate and solve problems. While playing with your child, you can intentionally create problem situations, such as those listed on the slide. By modeling, show your child how to give possible solutions or responses when two people can't agree during play. Remember to speak these words aloud 
so that your child will learn to use this new language. Also, model appropriate versus inappropriate reactions. For example, when playing Lego, it is okay to say, too bad, we're doing what I want. We're building a roller coaster and that's final. This is an example of an inappropriate reaction or statement. Have your child help you judge why this is inappropriate and help you become an active participant in generating alternatives and solutions. Of course, always commend their efforts to be flexible, such as saying, that was really nice of you to let your friend Mario go first. Your turn will be soon. The third strategy we will talk about is highlighting facial expressions and gestures. Kids need to be able to understand and use facial expressions and gestures effectively. A great activity to help grow these skills is to focus on characters' facial expressions and body language while reading storybooks. Look at the picture on the slide. This picture is from The Paper Bag Princess by Robert Munch. You can see here that both characters are clearly expressing messages and we don't even have to read the words of the story to understand. Take turns guessing what a character is feeling based on their expressions and body language. Label the emotions that appear to be communicated. Then read the page to see if you are correct. Most children's stories that contain pictures show a character's feelings through their facial expressions and body language. So, while reading a book to your child at home, direct them to look at the pictures, specifically looking at the character's expressions and body language. Help your child understand what the character is feeling and ensure you label those feelings aloud. In some cases, you may have to help your child understand why a character has that expression or emotion. Finally, let's talk about turn-taking. Successful communication involves taking turns sharing messages back and forth with a listener. Activities such as playing simple card or board games helps your child see the importance and necessity of taking turns in conversations. Language for winning and losing, protesting and encouraging, as well as negotiating, can be modeled very well while playing games. Let's take a look at what that can look like at home. While playing a simple game, ensure you choose a game that has short turns and is short in duration. Explicitly label turns to start, such as your turn, your sister's turn. Model language for negotiating, winning, losing, protesting and encouraging while playing the game and reinforce your child's efforts to wait using sentences like good job waiting for your turn for your next step choose one of the four strategies highlighted in this short presentation and try it with your child there is also a tip sheet available to remind you of the strategies and activity suggestions as well Short video models are also provided. Thank you for watching this short webinar, Social Communication at Home, Strategies for Parents and Caregivers, presented by the Speech Language Pathology Services of the Toronto District School Board. For additional information, please consider exploring the Speech Language Pathology website for TDSB parents listed above and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.